Hi everybody, Heather Stargazer here to do reading for the collective, for whoever, whenever, wherever. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Sorry, I'm just getting comfortable. It's been one of those weird mornings, you know, it's Mercury retrograde. We got the full moon in Aquarius tomorrow. We'll be doing a reading specifically for that tomorrow. Um, just take your time, you know, um, if you need to adjust to things, just breathe and, you know, let, let things have their time right? Try not to rush things. Try not to hurry because that's this real uh, feeling of pushing into things and getting a, um, you know, a calamitous response. You know what I mean? Like that's like when you're in a hurry and you're trying to run out the door and you can't find your keys and then you accidentally knock over your coffee and then your sweater gets caught on the doorknob and all of those things are just like, just take a deep breath and, you know, let... I'm, I might be a few minutes late, you know, that kind of a thing. We've been getting a lot of solar storms lately. Like I, I was I was mentioning before, we're approaching a, a solar maximum of our solar cycles. Or they undulate like waves, just like everything else. Um, so there's a, a, t a time period where there are a ton of sunspots. And there's a time where there's barely any sunspots. And um, sunspots... Um, are spots on the on the sun's surface that have uh, polarity, right? Magnetic polarity, and when you get two different kinds of ma magnetic polarity and they mix together, there becomes a, a, a need for discharge, and they emit um, frequency, light frequency flares, sometimes particle ejecta. Um, why am I talking about this? Because we've been getting a lot of solar flares lately, and it really does affect our health and well-being. But they aren't bad things. It's not a bad thing to get a solar storm. Um, I was looking, wanting to read to you guys today. I've got The Origins of the Zodiac by Rupert Gleedow. This is a fantastic book. It took this guy like seven years to write it. He passed away in 1974. Um, but this is just a wonderful, wonderful book if you guys are interested in getting to know the Zodiac. And um, I was looking in it uh, this morning. I just was looking up a few things and I found this thing about the procession of the equinoxes and something that I um, maybe I didn't realize that I guess I, I read this before and then I had forgotten it that a lot the Maunders the Maunders were a couple of astronomers in the um, in the the late 1800s early 1900s it was Edward and uh, Edward Walter Maunder I'm sorry I'm reading it off a of wiki just to make sure I get it right for you and his wife it was his second wife um, Annie Scott Dill Russell right um, she was a mathematician and astronomer with whom he collaborated for the remainder of his life she worked as a lady computer at the observatory from 1890 to 1895 and in 1895 um, they were married and then in 1916 Annie Maunder became one of the first women accepted to the Royal Astronomical Society and um, together they identified a period called the Maunder Minimum, which was a cycle um, where there were no sunspots for an extended period of time, and it caused um, um, a mini ice age on the planet, right? From 1645 to 1715. Um, it, it, so sunspots aren't bad. We do need them. The cycle of the earth does does respond to them. We as physical creatures do respond to them. And so what I'm about to read to you is an astrological discovery um, that they made, uh, uh, affirming that these people are scientists. They're significant scientists. And Annie, um, Annie Scott Dill Russell, you know, is a... Um, she's like she's like a flag woman for us all man she she you know you did what was impossible for most most women in that time period we need to remember that nothing is impossible we said it yesterday those who say something is impossible should stay out of the way of those who are doing it and so we learn this so this is um about the uh the dates of like the babylonian ways of of um astrology Right, and it says, um, two astronomers, Mr. and Mrs. Maunder, writing in the monthly notes of the Royal Astronomical Society for March 1904, print the following list of meanings for the Akkadian month names according to a certain Colonel Condor of the Royal Engineers lambing, calving, bricks, harvest, very hot, dried up, thunder, irrigation, very cloudy, flood, very rainy, plowing. This list starts with the lamb, a form of Aries, goes to the calf, 
of the uh, of the nature of Taurus it gives very hot in the fifth position that of the lion right in the place of the goat fish the waterman says flood and very rainy that's um, Capricorn mr. and mrs. Maunder then comment it will be seen that this scheme has no zodiacal reference but it is entirely climatic um, yet why should the zodiac have no climatic reference? If we draw up a table of the Sumerian months from which the Babylonian, Assyrian, and Hebrew month names were derived, we find that a good number of them have seasonal references such as brick making, seed corn, lightning brazers, wind and rain, and the rest are the name for religious festivals. Indeed, according to Professor Langdon, a striking aspect of the Sumerian babylonian religion is the association of myths with each of the month and the attempt to find the regional, um, regional constellation Reginal constellations of the month's figures which correspond to the ideas involved in monthly myths. Obviously, therefore, we must investigate the monthly myths in order to see whether any by chance they throw light on the origins of the zodiac. So, um, here there's, you know, we had, we had, uh, imperial astrology we have mundane astrology like it doesn't uh, it didn't originate with us starting to try to figure out who we are it started uh, with us trying to figure out how the cycles worked what those things were and as we progressed it became um, a form of psychology and then astro astronomers who are studying science the science of you know placement of stars activities types of stars started realizing um, or really digging into the idea that all of the monthly associations, the cycles in which we live and have lived for eons, ages, literally ages, um, are associated with the calendar in the sky, right? And how does, and that's part of my research too, how does that affect the solar cycles? How do the solar cycles respond to where they are in space? And then how does that affect us on Earth, us personally and our um, our climate? So that's just something to consider, uh, something I thought that need we needed to think about and share, especially with um, solar cycle 25 coming up and all of the auroras that we're seeing. Um, just uh, take, take, like I said, take time if you need it. Now we're seven minutes in, we'll get on with the reading. Ancestors, spirits, guides, what messages do you have for the collective today? We have the Knight of Cups out with the, uh, in the upright with the Devil in Reverse and the Three of Pentacles. Um, there might be some, the High Priestess. Let's get the next ones. Four of Pentacles. Okay, and then we get the Seven, okay, seven of Swords in the uh, upright Page of Pentacles and the chariot on the bottom. It talks about forward moving action, having our head and our heart on the same page, victor victory, right? But definitely getting there, travel, movement. We also have the Knight of Cups, which also implies movement, right? Maybe travel, it's, it's a heartfelt action. It's, some, it's something um, offered to us, some, something, um, it could be even, let's say, like romantic, but it's, it's, it doesn't have to be that. It's something with a lot of feeling in it because there could be something that your intuition is telling you about this, about this um, heartfelt offer, about this emotional action, right? It's like, it's almost like there's, there's something yet to be revealed. We're not quite using our, our intuition. Maybe I heard secrets out and that makes sense with this devil in reverse, letting go of um, codependency, bad contracts, addictions, right? Things that are not good for us, letting go of those toxic binds. It could be an apology. It could be an apology, for someone's toxic behavior, you could be it could be someone needing help healing, right? Holding on to your coin, holding on to what's valuable, not letting it be taken by this toxic energy, drained out by this toxic energy. We had this conversation yesterday, right? About who, what, when, and where are they doing this, right? Three of pentacles in the reverse with the seven of swords. Nope. Again. This could be a carryover from the energies of yesterday because this has to do with like being recognized, appreciated for all of your hard work to where you could actually teach somebody how to do it. And then we have the seven of swords in the reverse and it's like, you know, um, lying, cheating, stealing, right? Strategy. How is this not, how is this not happening? It's almost like the, um, the occurrence of 
the toxic energy and having to let go of that makes you maybe feel like you need to also let go of some investments or maybe you're, maybe you're not being honest with yourself about your own capabilities here we have the page of pentacles just came, kind of came out on its own here um learning student energy slow slow moving action um and slow moving messages right there could be messages coming in let's just see what this looks like here don't let them get in your coffers right it could be somebody acknowledging and seeing what what has occurred and they're trying to encourage you to like hold on to what is yours it's just like giving this robot money right putting it in that putting it in that bucket right there like receiving that it's like it's like this habitual need to uh, to contribute to something and it's saying maybe don't contribute to that because it's siphoning you off at the other end i'm seeing this uh it's steampunk tarot right above above the doorway there there's this uh masonic eye with these swords going into it it's almost like it's being witnessed like closed behind the door and remember i said like secrets out just saw 11 11 right something is very somebody is very um obvious about their about their uh shadiness about their shady behavior right see how they're building this and there's this archway again it's like what's on top of that archway and it's almost like somebody is um, siphoning off or making making you feel like what you've contributed and what you've had to contribute um, is going to one thing when it's actually going to something else. Take that how it resonates. That might not be for everyone. It does feel like this depletion. Like we have two, three, four out here. <coughs> and two sevens. It feels like there's some sort of divine intervention. Can you tell me about this Knight of Cups, please? Again, with the Three of Pentacles in the reverse. And it's like someone says you're putting in all that hard work and they feel kind of like maybe they should go pat you on the back, give you some encouragement. Maybe I just saw 12-12. Kind of like you're taking this action because it's something that you genuinely care about deep in your heart. I keep thinking about that modern minimum, that like, that like ice age, that mini ice age. That the cycle where there was no activity, and that could be what we're kind of feeling right now. It's like Mercury retrograde, right? That feeling of um, oh, like a like a forced stop, but it's also it's like I, I like you know if it's draining you to the point where your your work isn't being seen, there's a problem here. Yeah, it's not high priestess in the reverse with the ten of cups. This talks, like, you know, I said all will be revealed. It's like somebody's actually sharing their feelings. Somebody's like coming out with it. Someone's like saying, this is how I actually, you know, all will be revealed. Not listening to my intuition about friends, family, places, things that actually love me, places where my heart actually is, right? And somebody coming to like encourage you through, through maybe your doubting of yourself to bring you the truth about who you are and what you're capable of but the fact that they care about you and they want to see you do well 1331 all right what is this devil in reverse what are we letting go of what is this all about here strength in reverse and then like some truck hitting its its air brakes real real <laughs> pulling it back here yeah this toxic this toxic energy that's draining your strength and then it's like being restful in the time of Leo season, right? And he talked about the Leo season being the hot season. And then he did bring up Capricorn and here's this Capricorn, Capricornian energy, like letting go of those restrictions because we don't have the strength to hold on to them anymore. Letting go of that toxic behavior, letting go of those toxic associations, whatever those addictions are, whatever those things that we're putting into our body, right? That are draining our strength. I heard they're making you ugly, Right? They're making you feel ugly. Not that you have an ugly pers like person in your face, but it's like, you know, your skin isn't the way that it should be. You're you're not you're you're not presenting in a way that is your beautiful self. And that's what this kind of thing does. It takes it takes uh, off our beauty and it puts on a cloak of yuck and it's about like not having um the want or strength to contribute to something anymore because it's put us in a state of um 
like disparaging ourselves, letting go of that. Somebody is coming in here to remind you today. Somebody is coming in here to remind you today of how strong you actually are, kind of like lift you up, right? Return, return some of your value to you. Four of, four of pentacles, please. Five of cups in the reverse. Holding on to what matters and no longer being sad. Like you, you, you aren't, it, it's almost like you're so drained. You can't, you can't do the thing, like get motivated, get moving. Right. But at the same time, it's like a relief. You can go back to be reminded of your ton of cups of what truly fills you, fills you full of love and, and joy and strength, holding on to what is yours and not being sad about it. No regrets. Five of, five of pentacles in the reverse is that feeling of being left out, right? And it's like not, not feeling left out anymore. You're shutting the door on this negative energy. You're shutting the door on this, uh, this toxic thing so that you can regain your strength. Now let's talk about this three of pentacles in the reverse because we got it twice and we get the two of swords in the upright and the mother of swords in the reverse. Damn. This is somebody being a stone cold bitch to put some kind of blockage in your way. Just want just want you to know that to get to put you in a point of indecision. And it might be saying that you need to adopt this type of um, you know, queen of swords in the upright, not in the reverse. But I mean, this person and again, it's above the seven of swords. This person is very dishonest. This person is very rude. I'm hearing rude. And they use words, they use communication or the lacking lack of communication to get their way. And they're resentful and they're bitter and they're angry, right? And they're, they're, their negative vibe here has caused a blockage. See, there's like this eclipse here where the full moon is going in front of the sun. So the light is blocked out and you can't, you can't see the reflection off the moon or the shine off the sun. And that's that's really putting a stop in what you're what you're able and capable of doing until we remove this this uh, situation and this energy. And I think that right now it's like letting you know who's who again. This identity of who's who, Mother of Swords, is the exact op in the reverse is the exact opposite of this Knight of Knight of Cups. Okay, and that's you got you got both the Knight of Cups in the upright offering you love and respect. And the Queen of Swords in the reverse offering you gaslighting and bullshit, right? Because they're an angry person, because they have things that they need to work out, right? So um, Seven of Swords, it's, it's, it, it, keep in mind the whole time here, we have the victory on the bottom, having our head and our heart on the same page. So you will supersede this, but you do have to acknowledge, you know, what is what and what is draining you. And if there is somebody here, maybe talking shit about your work, maybe putting negative things out there um, in the world that are false to make people to diminish the, uh, the view of the quality of your work. And you you hold on to what you're doing, you know, you know, what you're capable of what it is that you've learned hold on to that and block them bitches out okay because you need to regain your strength and you're not going to be doing it alone somebody here is taking loving action towards you today because they see this they see this now can we have some clarifiers what is this seven of swords about please wow the Ten of Swords in reverse and the Chariot. Now we have the Chariot out twice. That's Major Arcana for Cancer because it's um, Cardinal Water Energy. Cardinal gets moving, right? They We take action. I say we because I'm Cardinal Fire. We take action. Cardinal Signs move forward. They're, they're, they know what they, they get an idea of what they want to do or what is right or what is needed and they move through it in the way that is best suited to their element. This is the water element that's having your emotions in the right, the right space here. What I, seven of swords, here we go. 10 of, 10 of swords in the reverse. This is a lie. This is a conniving thing to get you to slide back down on those swords right to to get like to dig up what was dead in the past and reexamine it so that it hurts you again and uh you got the chariot here twice saying uh uh I don't think so your head and your heart are on the same page you're making victor victorious movement toward 
your goals, your wishes, your dreams, and to uncovering this. This person's not going to get away with this. Okay, but it does start with identifying the problem. And it's about something that happened in the past that is over with that somebody just can't that somebody just can't seem to get over, but you are getting over it. And you've taken what is valuable with you as you go. And leaving the rest, right? Page of Pentacles. What is this Page of Pentacles over here? It's hopped out of the deck. What does that say? The sun and the high priestess in the upright. Now we have the high priestess out twice. But now she's in the upright. I heard it takes, I said, I'm slow to learn, but I do learn. Mm -hmm. The sun all will be revealed about what is being hidden right now. Right, those aspects here she is just like coming out of the coming out of the closet, really starting to see all will be revealed. The the your your um your intuition will be returned to you. Now, here is this high priestess. High priestess is the gatekeeper. She sits between these two pillars. Boaz and J Jason, Jack in, right? Um, she sits between them. They're they are the pillars of justice, light and dark, right? Light and shadow. You don't need to put good and bad on them. It's just that some is light and some is not. Some is revealed and some is not. And she knows all the secrets. But is she telling you? And in this sense, it's like you're sitting at the beginning of this. You're sitting down having a heartfelt conversation with somebody who truly cares about you. I just saw 2121. About the fact that your work isn't going as far as you wish that it would. Like, what am, what am, what am I missing here? What am I not getting? And it's... The fact that you've been drained by some sort of toxic energy that wanted to steal your light, wanted to steal your shine. We have both major arcanas out for Leo. Two Piscean cards, right? Uh, Capricorn. Cancer. So this is like, uh, I'm like fire and water here, right? Could steam and it's steampunk. So how are we going to use this energy to um, get our steam engines moving, to get us going here? Slow and steady, and then there's the train. It's like all will be revealed and you will be absolutely fine. As, as 2211 just came up, well, now we have the, the uh, at a crossroads. Head and heart on the same page. This is the road you're going down. Which which way are you going to go? 2222. How are you going to handle this? Mighty victoriously, I would say. Mighty successfully, I would say. Because you're coming out with the sun. You're coming out with the high priestess in the upright. You're going to take back your secrets. You're going to take back your, your trade secrets. I heard know-how. You're not going to be draining this off to people who are going to be using it against you and to put a, a block in your path so that you you can't get any further. It's almost like justifying their, their um, lies. And you're calling it for what it is, which is bullshit. And you're you're like not feeling bad about withholding at all. What does this say? Rainbow. Interesting. Rainbow, Mirage, Cosmic Child. And the reason I say this is because these are both optical illusions due to refraction. Right? How the light is bent. It's like the light comes through and it shines in all of these different aspects, all of these different bits. These are every one of these is an ace of cups, right? And it's like it's shining through and putting you in this, this space where it's very prismatic. Suddenly each individual thing, when the light shines on it, you can see each individual thing for the actual color that it is, the vibration of it. Right? And you can tell the difference between what's solid and what's just appears to be there. Right? It just it it's light interacting with the humidity, with the temperature coming off the surface. It's creating the illusion that there's something there when there's really not. This person is creating an illusion that something is is wrong when there isn't. And so you come out here shining all of your beautiful light cosmic child, right? Absolutely beautiful. And like all will be revealed and you will be seen for the gorgeous, beautiful,
beautiful soul that you are and the quality of work that you do, the, the diversity in the quality of work that you do. I mean, you didn't just you didn't just master one thing. You mastered every part of it. You know it inside and out. All right. And someone is here to help you bring comfort with that. And then we are saying that the light and shadow. Here's the shadow with like a mudra to help draw that in. You know, um, maybe there was something within yourself that felt that you deserved this and that's why you put up with it because this person like gaslit you into believing that shit but then someone comes in today with with a little bit of love and you're like whoa maybe i wasn't seeing that in the right the right sense maybe you were seeing it through the lens of someone who was bitter and mean and rude and now you're starting to clear that up and 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 wow there will be the that there will be movement forward from this. You know, it's like seven, seven, seven here and the ten of the ten of swords in the reverse. Divine intervention. And the cycles. The cycles of time. I it's like identifying that. Identifying what is what is actually going on to understand um why why the cycles are happening this way and knowing that like you know they're not that, that it's necessary i just keep thinking about those sunspots i keep thinking about um annie scott dill russell over here and how she was probably the one who was uh the i want to say like the smarter of the two but she had to have been pretty damn smart to be able to achieve what she achieved and get where she needed to go and to find a partner who she could lean on and help her i've heard that about einstein too that it was actually his wife Read up on that. So when they asked him who the smartest man in the world was, and he said Nikola Tesla, he wasn't kidding. You know, and then when she passed away, when his wife passed away, so did a lot of his great discoveries. So what is going on, and how will it be remembered? The universe wants you to be seen for who you are in all of your shining glory. And so this has to be cleared away. This has to be cleared up. And this person needs to be seen for who they are. This shit needs to be seen for what is they're doing. And that's going to that's gonna show someone is coming today to help you, to open your eyes. All right, we have the talisman oracle. What, uh, what talisman will help us do this today? And now the rain is starting. Look, change. Change. And good fortune. The chariot twice moving toward that and this looks like this chameleon new experiences will bring excitement to your life will you be taking a risk um, or unknown step forward but listen to your intuition and follow the process of change the chameleon feels no need to rush wow who the best opportunity lies ahead waiting for you. Don't fear making mistakes because they present opportunities to grow and learn something new. Acknowledge that time that is a time of progress and don't waste your energy fighting this move. Go with the flow, man. Go with this. The time is nigh. The seed of life behind the chameleon represents the unity of all aspects of life. This change will bring chameleon... Chame cumulative fulfillment Cul you know it culminates <laughs> mercury retrograde be ready to embrace the unknown and enjoy the adventure ahead of you use this talisman when you are ready to step out of your comfort zone when you are in a new environment and you need to adapt smoothly in a situation where you fear the chain when you feel the fear of change rising. Envision the chameleon changing its color. Assign different colors to the various energy or emotions you want to channel with the help of time. Remembering these colors will help you embrace that particular energy. I am adaptable. Wow, you guys, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm adaptable, but damn, I am floored right now. Taking your time and shining the light so that each one can be the color that it is. And truly seeing it for what it is. Here is the um, talisman for change. If you want to pause that and focus on that image. On that symbol there. Okay. Um, and good fortune on the bottom, right? So to close up, because that's what you're bringing in. 
You're bringing, you're bringing in, you're allowing the good fortune to come through. It's like you're at this crossroads, but there is definitely movement forward. Are you going to slink back into your space and withhold yourself from the beauty that is, um, that is you, that is the work that you've done? Or are you going to, um, you know, be honest with yourself and allow the light to shine on the fact that this person is deliberately putting blockages in your place? It's a mental game. It's a mental game, and it, you'll know who's doing it because that person is bitter, mean. Um, they're very smart. They might pick on you like, oh, I, I was just joking. They might say like, oh, I was just joking, right? But um, you know that that's, that that's just their, their own like shitty self-esteem. They need to go deal with that. You focus on your work here, and someone is coming in. It feels like someone is coming in today with a giant hug to put you back in the space of, of being open to learning and moving out into the world slowly, right? Remember, take your time, Cosmic Child. Take your time. All right. Oh, cosmic creatures, ancestors, spirit guides. What creature? What critter? We best in pot animal spirit today. Wow, fox and dog. It was like the wildness of it. Foxes always kind of remind me of like a cross between a cat and a dog, right? Cunning, trickster, sharpness. And then we'll read this one too. It's about loyalty. Okay. Yeah, we need to do that. We need to read them both. Take a look at your surroundings. The fox is helping you sniff out deception, whether it's in relationships, business, or your environment. Look to see if anything is misleading or rubbing you the wrong way. Pay attention to those signs. Trust your fox instincts to decipher the truth. The fox protects you from being taken advantage of and allows you to use your own discernment to guide your decisions and actions. There's more than one way of doing things, and the fox teaches you to sharpen your senses. Although foxes are, in act, are active in the day, they are also nocturnal creatures and bring their activities into the night, which gives you a creative edge when concocting scenarios during dreams. Bring some humor into what you do. The fox is a prankster and can sneak around undetected and uses its wits to its advantage. Summon the fox when you need the sharper edge. Wow. Thank you, fox spirit. Absolutely. I'm telling you guys, stand strong today. Stand strong, stand firm. Mm. And if you need to be a little, like we were talking about yesterday, if you need to be um, a little stealthy, Right? Yesterday we had like a tiger energy. Like if you need to be a little stealthy, same with this fox. Cunning, witty. You are smart. You are smarter than this person. No, they think they're the smartest person in the world. They're not. Because they're completely blinded by their resentment and bitterness. Wow. It just feels like so yucky. Like I want to get back into this space, back into the space of the sun, of the chariot, where you are the chameleon, right? Don't let this this situation this person this thing keep you down right accept the hug from the knight of cups just saw 33 11 here's the the dog loyalty unconditional love companionship known as man's best friend dogs have stood by humans in the face of immense threats putting themselves in the line of danger to defend their loved ones as you as long as you're a part of the pack, the dog will look out for you and be there through thick and thin. When dog spirit applies in your life, you are being shown how to embody the traits of loyalty and unconditional love. Are those there those who need to be forgiven for you to move on? Do you find yourself protecting your pack no matter what? Others might see you as a guardian, looking after people you love and accepting them for exactly who they are, flaws and all. You can see the humi humanity behind the imperfections and connect to the commonalities that exist between us all. The need to be safe, loved, seen, and heard. The dog is a symbol of companionship, partnering up with you when you need it the most. Wow, yeah, you are not alone. You are, you, you are very, very, very loved. True love, true companionship, true, true, true that true that right um this person needs to find some love within themselves too 
that's where the bitterness comes from. Maybe they feel unseen. Maybe they feel unheard. Maybe they feel hurt. And maybe your empathy for their situation in play is what has allowed them to get this far in messing with you. It's time for you to take back, take back some of the, the, not some of the power, all the power. Take the reins, chariot twice, right? There's so many twos. This is talking about partnership and coupling um but it's, it's talking about like a direct relationship with one other person and that doesn't have to be like the person that we are in the most committed relationship with or that is the most significant you know it doesn't have to be like our our spouse or our business partner right it could be your it could be your friend it could be your spouse it could be your business partner take it how it resonates but remember always that we have, a, we have a lot of different relationships in our lives, and sometimes we focus on one thing so heartily and so heavily that we miss what's going on in other, other aspects and other relationships, and it allows people to get away with some pretty shitty things if we're not, um, A, completely aware of it, and be completely accepting of, you know, flaws and all. I accept you for who you are, flaws and all. That doesn't mean that I'm going to let you get away with this. It doesn't mean that we're going to let you continue to do this. Nope, nope, nope. So uh, I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you got something out of it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for remembering to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it really does help. And I truly do appreciate it. And thank you for coming back and seeing us again next time. Bye.